Other than trying to scratch out a living, cross picking is probably the hardest thing that you can do with a guitar. So here's a really great exercise that you can use to get better at it. Hey kids and welcome to a brand new installment of Weekend Wang Shop here with your good buddy, Uncle Ben. One thing that I've learned over the years playing guitar is that nothing is really harder than cross picking where we're playing single notes on strings and alternate picking our way through them. This is the realm that dudes like Steve Morris live in 24-7 as well as a lot of bluegrass pickers and crossover dudes like my man Andy Wood. Simply put, if I was to make a difficulty degree rating of picking stuff, I would say that picking on a single string is easy. Alternate picking on a single string is a little harder. Changing strings every now and then is harder still. And changing strings with every single pick stroke is borderline impossible for a lot of us. But just like any other technique, if you give yourself a reason to do it, you will get good at it. So if you start writing licks and stuff that are designed around using that technique and you need that technique to make it happen, you'll probably get better at it. This is kind of a scalar arpeggio hybrid lick that I made up. And it's based around something that my good buddy Emil Wurstler showed me a while back to help get my own picking out of a rut. He also does Skype lessons like me and I hit him up one time a couple months ago to try to find some new things to get my picking going. He showed me this idea about combining an arpeggio with a scalar sequence and uh, this is sort of based on that. Again, it's a great way to get used to that cross picking kind of thing as well as just a really killer way to warm up at the start of the day. Before we get into it, let's hear it again at stepdad speed. And as always, you can find a full tab for this week's lick on my Instagram page, so be sure to find me over there. Ben Eller Guitars is my username. Find the tab, learn how to play this week's lick, then upload a video of yourself ripping through it along with the hashtag Weekend Wank Shop. Okay, first things first, let's just talk about the positions of these arpeggios and scales and stuff, then we'll get into all the good picking business here. So the first thing that you're going to do is to start off with this A minor arpeggio, which is going to be like this. This is all in the key of C, by the way, so we're using nothing but natural notes. So I'm going to start off with A, which is my 12th fret A, the 10th fret D, the 9th fret G, the 10th fret B, the 8th fret E, and then the 12th fret E. So now we just have this. Kind of a popular five string sweet arpeggio pattern. So the basic premise of this lick here is that you're going to climb up an arpeggio and then walk down in a scale. So what we're going to do here is after we play that 12th fret on the high E, which is an E note, we're going to just play down the A minor scale here. So we're going to play D, 10th fret E, C, 8th fret E, B, 12th fret B, A, 10th fret B, G, 8th fret B, F, which is our 10th fret G, E, which is the 9 on the G, D, which is 12th D, 10, uh, which is a C note, 9, which is B note, and that's where we wrap up for the A minor section. So now we get this. 12, 10, 8, 12, 10, 8, 10, 9, 12, 9, 10. So then what we're going to do is make a big position shift up here to a C arpeggio, which we can find starting off here on the 15th fret A string, which is a C note. Here's the arpeggio shape. We've got to play 15 on the A, 14th D, 12th G, 13th B, 12th high E, 15th high E. Again, that's a really popular five string sweet pattern. And then after we hit this G note, we're just gonna climb down the scale here. 13th fret E, 12th fret E, 15th B, 13th B, 12th B, 14th G, 12th G. Then on the D, we're gonna play 15, 14, and 12. So now you got this. 15, 13, 12, 15, 13, 12, 14, 12, 15, 14, 12. And then the last position you're going to end up in here is D minor, which is going to start off here on the 17th fret A, 15th fret D, 14th fret G, 15th B, 13th high E, 
and then 17 on the high E. So that's... It's the same shape as the A minor that we started with today. Just moved up here to the 17th starting note. Now on the way down, we're gonna play 15, 13, B string 17, 15, 13, G string here, you're gonna play 16, 14. Then on the D, we're gonna play 17, 15, 14. So now you got this. 17, 15, 13, 17, 15, 13, 16, 14, 17, 15, 14. After this, I'm just going straight down onto the G string. Same fret, number 14 there, ending on an A note, which is our root. Then I hit a little A power chord at the end there. Nothing too crazy. So all together, that's A minor, scale down, C major, scale down, D minor, scale down, A. And as for the picking, this is all alternate picked, even the arpeggio sections. Most guitar players would be tempted just to go down, 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 up, which is a great way to play that kind of stuff typically. But again, we're doing this to improve our cross picking mechanics. So don't cheat out on it. Alternate pick the whole thing like this. Down, up, 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 down, up. So now that you know the positions, let's spend some time talking about the picking. To assist me in telling you about it, I'm going to use this doodad right here. This is called the magnet, and it's something that was invented by Troy Grady of the incredible Cracking the Code lesson series. And uh, Troy was recently in Knoxville, Tennessee, filming a video on my good friend Andy Wood, and I was there hanging out with him. And at the end of the day, Troy gifted me with this himself so that I could use it to further educate you young shredomaniacs. If you've ever watched any of the Cracking the Code stuff, you know what this thing is good for. I'm going to mount my phone in it, put it on the neck of the guitar, that way you can look down at my picking hand and see what kind of motions and stuff I'm making. Let's check it out. Now as you can see, especially in the slow motion video right there, anytime I'm doing the cross picking motion where again I'm alternate picking while changing strings, the picking takes on a very curved sort of appearance like this. This cross picking mechanic simply cannot work if the tip of your pick is always inside of the strings like this, where it's a very flat, you know, literally up and down kind of motion like this. It cannot work because you go down stroke, hop, up stroke, hop downstroke, hop, upstroke, it just does not work at all. The tip of the pick has to take on a curved kind of motion like this, kind of like twisting a key in a lock. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Cracking the Code put out a video all about the incredible Martin Miller, who's an amazing guitar player and an incredible picker who does a lot of this cross picking stuff. Be sure to go over to Troy's channel and watch that, tell him I sent you there to get an even better look at this important technique. But the biggest thing I want you to take away from this is you have to do downstrokes that curve away and upstrokes that curve away. Notice how the tip of the pick is always getting air time. Now I'm exaggerating, obviously, but you need that exaggeration to see what's happening with this motion. So again, curved downstrokes, curved upstrokes, just like that. As you get faster, the motions get smaller and smaller and harder to see, but that's what's going on. So there you go guys, a cool cross picking lick and some insight into possibly the most dangerous and versatile guitar techniques. Because really, honestly, if you can cross pick really well, you don't even need to worry about economy picking or sweeping and going in and out of alternate picking plus economy picking and all that kind of jazz like a lot of guys do. If you can cross pick really well, there's nothing you can't pick. Thank you guys so much for watching. A huge thanks goes up to Emil Wurstler for kind of planting that seed in my mind of this sort of combined alternate picked arpeggio to scale sequence thing. It's definitely helped my playing out a lot. Be sure to hit up Emil Wurstler's website 
and contact him about getting some one-on-one -on -one lessons. Totally an amazing player and a great dude. Another big thanks goes out to Troy Grady and the Cracking the Code crew for hooking me up with the magnet there so that I can better teach you guys in the ways of the Shred Eye Knight. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ben Eller Guitars. Also, also, if you're looking to book some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons with me, be sure to drop me an email, benellerguitars at gmail.com. I'll get back to you and we'll talk rates and times and stuff. Thanks again so much. Be sure to stay tuned for another cool lick next week. Cheers, guys.